What's up, y'all? Today, we gonna show y'all how to start a photography studio. Look at her old oh, stretch. Go ahead, baby. No, my back got a. My back. Muscle pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? The closer you get to thirty, the more you feel like that. Now it's time to tell you how to start a photography studio. So the first thing you need to do is get some cheap rent. Ain't that right, baby? Yes, sir. Our rent is about $450 a month. Woo! That's it for this whole square unit. Now, after you figure out how much your unit is gonna cost you every month, the next thing you need to figure out is how many clients do I need to make some money? So we said, if we can get each client to come in for about $50, all we need is seven clients to come in for one hour through the month, which we thought we could do. We thought we can get seven clients to come in for one month for 50 hours. You get your rent. Then you figure out how many clients you need to come in every month to make your rent. If you think you can meet that number and still grow beyond that, then I think it's a it's a it's an opportunity. Next thing. Now you gotta start figuring out, okay, how am I gonna automate this place? Me and Lenise, we come down here once in a while. That's why we got the paper rollers. Oh man, I need to change this purple, this paper to blue. I need to change it to green. Look, we only give them a certain amount of colors. We have four colors up. That's the colors that we have to offer them. Anything else they want, they can come in with their own paper and they can set it up. Let's talk about the automation. You'll notice that on our door, we have a keypad. Cause we ain't got time to be coming down here, opening the door for each client to come in and come out and yada 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 non-stop 24 7 we don't have time for that so the best way to handle this is to have an automatic keypad uh a keypad doorknob so people could come in and come out on their own now i will say that we do need the key for that for that thing because if we ever lose it if this battery ever dies for whatever reason we won't be able to get in so it's a good thing that we have that key so the lights the next thing you're gonna need to do you need to understand that you're gonna have photographers that are amateurs and they're gonna need a continuous light they're gonna come in with their little camera phone, or come in for the first time, taking photos. They need something simple. Or you're gonna be on the phone trying to convince, trying to teach them how to do flash photography. And you don't wanna do that. You wanna be out there focusing on your life, on other investments, while they're in here taking their photos. So make sure you get a continuous light. And then for the more advanced photographers, make sure you get the flash. I like this Godox one that my baby found and this uh, flash that my baby found. They seem to work fine. They're really cheap. They're about $100 or some change. We're going to put it in the description below if you need to find some, but they work out really well. If you're starting out, let me just tell you, if you're starting out, do not get no super expensive, super fancy stuff. Because I'm going to tell you what happened in our experience. We used to have super fancy stuff. We used to have a whole lot of extra stuff in here, but people would come in and tell you up. It's just like, yo, how did this fall? How did this break? You always constantly trying to figure out how something happened because you got all this fancy stuff. So we stopped putting all that fancy stuff in here. That's why we used to have a big, the nice king throne chairs, but people would come and put grease all on their booty cheeks and sit in the chair, which I understand you want to be oiled up, you want to look cute in your photo, but now you didn't messed up my chair and now your booty cheeks oil stains is in my chair. So now we got this little 75 dollar chair as good as anything. And people don't complain, they use it, and we good. Make sure you get, we don't have it on our door, make sure you get the door stopper to close the door. I'll tell you, we went all the way to New York, and someone came in here, used the studio, and left the door, and left the door open for days on end. So I'm telling you right now, get that door stopper to make sure that door closed when people open and close it. it I, I still need to install one and I'm, I'm, I need to install one this year because I don't want that same problem. We were so far away. So uh, lastly, you need to have cameras in your spot. I know there's gonna be people gonna be like, oh, well, what about their privacy? What about this, what about that? All I'm, what I'm gonna say to you is what about your equipment and all the stuff you bring in here, okay? This is all your equipment. This is all the stuff you're doing in here. If people are gonna be in your space and you're not gonna be here, you need to have some, some cameras or something. 
What I recommend are these wise cameras. I love them. These wise cameras are really cheap. All they do is connect to the internet once you and get your own reliable internet service. We try to get the free one and the free one from the building goes in and out. So we don't do that no more. But get the wise cameras. We have three in our in our unit. That one, that one. And I'm not showing y'all what the last one is. You gotta keep your secrets. But you know, these cameras work fine. They have uh, SD cards that you put in them. They record and keep the recordings for about uh, three days. And if you want to pay for their actual service, it's about you know a couple dollars a month, but it'll store online. Also, too. Um, make sure you get you some Bluetooth speakers. This is not what I was going to say, but I thought about this too. Get you some Bluetooth speakers because people got these iPhones on. They don't hook up to nothing. So you make sure you want to get you some nice quality Bluetooth speakers. Also too, make sure, like we in a building where it's like other offices in here. Um, so make sure when you're looking for your studio, I'm not telling you what to do, but one thing I look for when I was looking for a studio is to have really tall ceilings. So our ceilings are pretty tall. Uh, I think these are 14 feet ceilings. So you want to have big tall ceilings because you want sometimes people want to bring their lights up really high. You know, all kind of stuff. Make sure that you're collecting payments through Peer Space. If you're not going to use Peer Space and you're going to collect the money yourself, get Acuity. I, you know, I know there's people that, that use other softwares. I don't know how those other softwares you work. But we personally use Acuity. One, we're going to start this new thing called subscriptions so people can have a subscription to our space. And it's going to make us way more money than it used to where people just pay by the hour. We give them a better deal, but they were guaranteed to get a certain amount of money every month. So that's going to help us pay our rent. But um, having Acuity gives me peace of mind because I could charge people if they stay over, if they leave, and if they try to rob me and take something, I can charge their card. I got the camera, I got their card information stored on Acuity, I'm fine, you know what I mean? But if you're gonna go in there and be like, oh, I'm gonna take a cash app, they're gonna run with your money. Make sure you try to get a space that you could, people can change and use the bathroom. Oh. Our bathrooms are very disgusting here, I'm not gonna lie. We don't get to own the bathroom, it's a community bathroom, and sometimes they don't have tissue, sometimes they don't have stuff. Yeah, there's not an on-site janitor in this building. So, but we do have cheap rent, so I'm not gonna complain too much about it. It's like little things that we can't, you know, it's out of our control. But it does suck, and you know, people that wanna change, wanna change in a, in a you know, in a more, you know, uh, clean environment. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed our breakdown of how to start your own photography studio. We give you all the information we can give you. Now we're gonna go back to the computer. We're gonna break down how much money we've made this year, how much money we've made the whole time we've had the studio, and then uh, maybe we can give a breakdown of what might come in the future. Hey, what's up guys? So I'm back and I'm about to show you the numbers of all the money that we made this year, well, 2022, all the money that we made from Peer Space. This is not including um, our outside sources just yet um, with um, Stripe and people that booked outside of peer space. So, so this is the numbers that they put through peer space. So over here is the total payout of each booking together. Over here is how much each person booked for on this side line total. For the whole year, we made $12,353.28 in revenue. Um, this is just everybody that booked on peer space. And that's how much PeerSpace paid out. Of course, PeerSpace took their fee, so that is not included in the um, revenue because they take it out and then this is what they pay out. So uh, we paid $5,400 in rent for the year and we net profit $6,953.28. Uh, so after the end of the year, we took home almost $7,000. So since we had a studio in 2019, We've made $40,860.12. So now that's not including the rent. So we got to calculate the rent real quick. So we're going to go find our calculator real fast. Be thankful. All right. So we're going to put our gross revenue in right there. We got 16. We're going we to subtract our uh, rent. All right. So we, had, so we end up making a net profit of... We gonna put net profit right here. Net profit. And I used to be real good at keeping up with the um, peer space numbers, but I stopped 
putting them in a the chart because I don't know, I just got lazy. All right, we got $24,660.12. So we're gonna put that in here just so y'all can see the numbers. My baby love to show y'all the numbers, so I'm trying to get on the train because I don't do all this number stuff. I am not a numbers person, he would tell you. I'd be like, oh, it'll work out. We'll see the numbers. So, um, total all together, we spent, we made, sorry, total all together, we made a profit of $24,660.12 since we had the studio. So, I think that's pretty good. That's an extra 20 bands, you know, you had, you made in three years. I mean, and I didn't really have to do nothing but get a key code, do a little, send a couple messages and just start the studio up. So that's pretty good to me. Now, I did not calculate in this, um, I did not calculate how much we put, uh, how much we put up to get the, to acquire the space. So I think we spent like $1,300 to uh, move in. But um, yeah, so that's not in there. But other than that, those are the numbers. Uh, and I hope y'all see, see maybe, maybe, you know, owning a studio or a peer space studio or any kind of studio, maybe a production studio, a music studio or something like that is maybe benefit for you. If you see these numbers, I don't know. Uh, to me, it works out for me because it's an extra couple hundred dollars a year that I don't really have to work hard for. So, um, so those are the numbers. Um, so now that you see the numbers, maybe owning a studio may be a good idea for you, maybe not. But um, here are the numbers.